on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Who gon' bring it to the table? Boss Talk. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO. And I'm on the most, by the way, who creating content every damn day. Hey, man, we got a special guest in the house today, man. This guy right here, he really don't need no introduction, man. He, uh, he known. He known uh, upstate man, you yeah, know. I've been my up. Type of guy. Is he from Saginaw, Mount Pleasant? Where is this guy from? Is he from what part of Michigan? Is he from? No, he from Detroit, man. Check it out, man. Street Lord Rook is in the building. How you doing, brother? I'm doing great, man. How was it, sir? Man, I'm I'm totally blessed, man. Too blessed to be stressed, brother. Man, that's what it's all about, man. Say, man. Hey, man. So, hey, man. Just uh, what brings you down to Dallas today, man? Uh, I was just. Coming down, do some interviews, talk to different people. Got hanging a lot out. of money. He got a lot of money. He's just riding. That's all. Hanging out, man. Yeah. Enjoying life, man. Yeah, that's enjoying all life. life. So, so, it's all about so man, um, I, I like to go all the way back and just, just try to kind of uh, feel the backstory of you, you know, just so our listeners, um, the guys that watch this channel, understand who you are. Um, growing up in Detroit, just give us a little inspiration on the early, the early stage rook, you know, uh, I'm talking about uh, grade school coming up, what neighborhood, all that good stuff. <clears throat> I grew up on the west side. West, I grew up on the west side, west side of Detroit. Um, you know, I grew up in the hood. You know, my my parents was drug dealers. You know, my mom was in and out of jail. Dad was in and out of jail. So I was raised by my grandmother. You know, it was me and my little cousin. So me. Grew up a little less fortunate, kind of Section Eight. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Section <laughs> Covering Eight. Covering this subsidized house yeah. and just trying to figure it out. And yeah, make a better way. You know? So I had good times and bad times. When my mama was home, you know, she made it happen, made it all right. And when she was gone, me and grandma was trying to figure it out. She did the best she, had, the best she could with what she had. She made it work. You know? So yeah, it was all good. You no, know, I was a Athlete played football and basketball and stuff like How that. How old was you when you started playing football? Eight. <laughs> oh, yeah? Eight? Eight? eight you yeah. played all the way up to high school? All the way up to high school. Wow. That's yeah. that's, that's good. So, yeah. your mom and dad, what what was the uh, choice of drugs that they sold? Cocaine, heroin. Cocaine <laughs> in the back of the ride. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, yeah. Heroin, too. Right. Because that yeah. was what? what? What was that, boo? That was in the 70s? 70s, 80s. I was born in the late 70s. Well, okay. So, so 70s and 80s. Mama and daddy was hustling? Yeah. Uh, daddy went to the feds twice. Mama went to the trial with the feds. She won. and uh, But she went to state joint a couple times. Wow. So, growing up like that, uh, we just, I know we had uh, Shorty Lowe Jr. on here. He grew up like that in Bowen Homes. He was just down. And uh, uh, shout out Shorty Lowe Jr., man. But the... Um, uh, he gave the same type of spiel, man. Growing up like that, what kind of things did you see as far as transpiring between, you know, did you ever see the cops interacting with your mom, Neil, or did they ever, when was the first time you seen and knew that, hey, man, uh, we, 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 we hustling over here? Shit, you seen that day one. Like, I mean, my mom, when she was selling drugs, like, I done sold drugs with my mom. She was boosting. I done went boosting with my mom. Yeah. I done went to see my dad at the feds. I done went to see my mom at state prison. So Wow. And my family, it's down there, like, you get a certain age, you you got a sack. Like, it was down there, like, no. Like, it's okay. how, well, how old was you when you got your first sack? Let's talk about it. Man, I was hustling price in about 11. 11? You were selling a what? Weed. Weed. Cause that I, that you, was the first drug I started selling weed. Weed, yeah, yeah, and and so, did you did you ever sell cocaine? Yeah, I sold cocaine. I done sold heroin. I done sold pills. I done sold every drug you damn near could sell. I done, I've been a hustler. Like I was selling candy out my grandma's living room. Yeah, back when penny candy was going on. So yeah, so um, I I, I was listening in. You know, I, I looked back at. Uh, I seen you on a Big D Mogul's uh, uh, interview, and you were saying that uh, Street Lord uh, was uh, uh, around before BMF. Is that true, or you just? I mean, is nah, that cap? it's like no, nah, ain't no cap. Like what I'm saying is like BMF was around. Like, I ain't, ain't no knock on them guys. They to say they wasn't hustling, they wasn't getting money. But I'm saying in Detroit, BMF wasn't the shit that was popping. 
street lords was the shit that was popping. Like, it's no knock to say they wasn't getting money or they wasn't doing their thing, because I'm sure they was, you know. But the guys who was talked about at that time frame was not BMF. It was the street lords, so... Okay, so when did it? When did the street they laws? They came a little later then, right? Yeah, yeah. When yeah. did the street laws get bumped out the way? We got indicted in two thousand two. Some of us got indicted in two thousand two. Okay, okay. Yeah, so that basically ended the the, the the whole. How many people did, was it in the street lords? Out of the rap group, it was probably like five of us that literally rap, but around that was involved, it might have been ten, fifteen. When I got indicted, it was like twenty three people in the case, but. All of us didn't get indicted on that case. Like um, Street Lord Wine, he wound up catching a later case. He caught a case when I came home, and um, he just came home. Like he been home a little over a year now. Yeah, and um, some of them got killed. You know, so it's been a big mess going on. Yeah, throughout that process. But you know, we I- definitely. Where you hear that Detroit sound on music from T Grizzly and Sada and. Babyface Ray, a lot of that stuff come from the street lords, Big Shine. You see them give it up and show us love and mad respect. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, you know, I know you guys when you were doing the music during that time. I seen I, I seen you on a, 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 a photo with uh, Benny Siegel. Yeah. Uh, how did you guys link up? Um, just being popular, they came to the town. We did did a record with them, so I did a record with Benny Siegel. We did records with uh, Baby, Juvenile, BG, Capone and Nori, E40, Be Legit, uh, Shine. Pretty much whoever was popping at that time frame, we did some records with them. Who was the, who was the, who was the realest out of all those guys you just named? What? So yeah, yeah, I guess all the way. In. <laughs> like Which who, one of them niggas was real? See, because. We talk about real on here, and I see them niggas. I ain't tripping. Man. I'm a street nigga for real. Like I, I get it. I'm, I'm like you, really. And yeah. I'm just on this side, and I'm in Texas, <laughs> but I'm, I'm from the nothing, from the trenches, bro. And my people hustle too, so yeah. I get it. That's why I sit behind this seat because I know when it, it's real. You know what I'm saying? So, which one of them dudes was in the room that you, you could feel the energy that they, they really about what they say. I, I fuck with Billy J. Hella tough. Like Billy J. was my guy. You know okay, saying? I fuck with Billy J. Daz was cool. Every Too Short was cool. They were all cool no, I'm guys. T- I'm not talking about cool. I'm talking about but really, really, you know, when they come to the hood, they're going to pull up. Be, be legit. You see what I'm be saying? Be legit in the hood. Yeah, 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 yeah. Them K-100. niggas wasn't all in the hood. Them niggas quiet. A hey, lot be, of times, them niggas quiet. I done been around them niggas, man. Hey, be legit on the block with us, man. <laughs> <laughs> be legit on the block with us. He man, in the hood with us. It's sure. crazy, man. So, um, when you look at what happened with uh, Young Dolph, um, what, how do you look at that compared to when you guys were in the street? I mean, uh, uh, people coming up just uh, shooting and killing a guy like that. And and what are your thoughts on that? My thoughts on it, man, it's like, it's sad to me because it's like these guys, they come from nothing. And then they accumulate millions of dollars and you would think that they make it off the hood, but they gravitate to loving the hood, and then it'd be somebody from their own neighborhood and environment kill them. You know Every what I'm time. saying? Every time it happens. Yeah, but a lot of times, do you think they bring this stuff on themselves from the moves they make and the things that they say? And and Because you say a lot of stuff in this music, and I think that words are powerful. I think they become Oh, man, you. I think the power of the tongue is super powerful, so you got to be mindful of what you say because it come true. I You're truly right. believe that from the bottom of my heart. Um, I think... Some of these guys in the street be rapping it, but a lot of them may not really be in the street because some of the things that, that is true. you see people do, street guys wouldn't do. Like, I know at my hood, I can't have no car that stand out where it's like, that's Rook car if I'm beefing because they going to know that's his car. Mm-hmm. I need to have a car that looks like <coughs> everybody else's car so they don't get to jump on me where they could be following me because they know my car, shit like that. You know what I'm saying? I did a, I did a, uh, and I keep talking about this because the, you, you remember when I went viral when I did that uh, video? On Young Dolphin. Uh, on Young Dolphin, Dolphin when, when got he got it. shot in L.A. and I was telling him that, you know, this three stuff that y'all talking about is real, you know, and somebody could get killed. I got And I went viral because I, I spoke right to him and I guess it resonated the way that I spoke because I was really like, 
you know, you niggas ain't never been to jail. Y'all ain't never faced a life sentence. You ain't never had to do no time. When you, If you had to go down and do the time, you're talking about your auntie and your mom and them did and something that your uncle and them did, then you wouldn't even be doing the stuff you're doing right now. A lot of niggas were like, oh, you just talking. You think everybody get locked up then? that. No, I'm just telling you, you have some time to sit down and think about some things. You're going to come out doing things a whole lot different. different. yeah. For and sure. they don't get that. No. He probably still be here today if he got jail. You, it, it was either jail for me or or or, 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 or kill me during the time when I was in the streets. Man, I was telling somebody that the other day, like, if I didn't go to jail when I went in jail, for me was a blessing. You know that's what I'm saying? A, that's like, exactly right. Because it was only going to get worse. Like, we selling tons and tons of marijuana. I was just going to get a whole bunch more time. So good thing I went when I went where I was able to learn different things about the stock market and meet some different people where I was able to change my life. And some of the things that I do today is based on some of the things that I learned in jail. You know what I'm saying? So it was a blessing for me, even though it was an unfortunate situation that I didn't at the time want to go or felt like I needed to go. But, you know, God have a plan for us sometimes that we can't see that helped better us. And I think prison has made me a better man. For for, for sure. Um, So, Again, young Dolph, you know, um, uh, the the guy, like I said, and, I, and I, like I said, I just want to give him his time because at the end of the day, you know, the thing I hate the most is that it's like it's a given that after a person passes away, the next day they, they numbers go up, all these people crying and acting as if, you know, they just loved them and they, they, they weren't even with them when you seen them before they passed away. But it's like they're doing it for the gram. I'm being honest with you. And it's a spirit that, that, that you, you've you become, it's just because when you get you did it with, with, with what is his name, King Von. You did it with, uh, uh, Nipsey, uh, uh, with Nipsey. You did it with Mo3. You did it with uh, Pop Smoke. You did it, and you're getting used to this. And so now the next day after, y'all already uh, know it's rehearsed. That we do this the next day and hold we on, post pictures. Let me, let me stop right there. Let me, you can you can always say when something bad happened to somebody. They ain't got to always die. Like when something bad happened to somebody, the numbers always go up. It always like that. If something bad got to happen to you or you go to jail for numbers go up. Go up. Yep. I guess that's the that's the norm, I guess. I just think that people should give people, you know, get show, show they love while they got the opportunity. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, I, I like Young Dolph. I listen to Young Dolph music me long too. before this tragedy happened, but... People be wanting attention, man. We live in a time frame where everybody craving attention. And Instagram and Facebook, this that shit like some attention horse shit where people gonna do whatever mm-hmm. to get the most attention. Like you you see girls down there just be naked just to get some motherfucking wow. light. Attention. Wow. You crazy. know what I'm saying? Like where's the boy. where's the fucking daddies at? Like they ain't there. And then like Hold on, hold on. Some of some daddies do be there. They don't be caring. Just like, cause you got be, your kids and stuff, nigga. And you ain't the only nigga that got a kid, like, nigga. We not gonna do that them. today, bro. <laughs> I'm here with my kid. They in the front. Like, yeah, but, you, but listen, that don't matter. You, you these these niggas too. ain't at the high. These niggas is not these these niggas locked up. You got a grown dog you can't yeah. control. When you went down there to prison, all, you line the niggas up on this side of the wall. How many of them there? You line the white boy over here and you line his family. What how them niggas numbers look? It's, it's drastic. It's ridiculous. Man. It's ridiculous. Oh, I know that. You see what I'm saying? So when you look at what they done to our people, a lot of times, man, it's, it's hard to fight that narrative with that what's happening in our communities. I'm telling you. What do you think? I think, <laughs> man, the justice system is not, there's no justice at all. Like I said yeah. it before, like, in the justice system, it can't never be fair because it's did by human beings. It's mm-hmm. ran by human beings. You got, the person who commit the crime, they gonna act like they ain't did the shit. They ain't gonna lie. Then you got the motherfucking agents, they gonna lie like a motherfucker to get a conviction. We know that. So how can it be a justice system where it's fair when you got it ran by people who gonna do what it take to convict the motherfucker? Lie, set you up, do all type yeah, of stuff. Like, and then it's not like it's a lot of black people controlling the narrative with the say so if you got all white judges and then you got predominantly all black people coming in here and you ain't did no background check on these people or you don't know how they was raised or how they look at these individuals that come before them they don't look at it from a fair perspective they mm-hmm. think just because you had an encounter with the police that you did wrong when that may not be the case I get it I get it um, so 
you you you're dealing with filming too. I I seen that when I was looking down at Rabbit Hole. Yeah. Um, but what are the films that you've created? There are some on Amazon as well, right? I got one on Amazon right now called One More Flip. It actually was number I one. I seen on, that one. It was on it was number one on Amazon for a while. Um, all independent. Got like three more done. That's on the way. That I'm gonna be releasing in the next couple of weeks. I'm gonna release Cheddar Boys. Um, I just finished uh, doing a score on that. You got payroll, Giovanni, um, Scoot. She got a couple of popular people. You got the girl Erica Pinkett who played in um, All Eyes on Me in it. I got another one called Off the Porch. You got a, a rapper from Detroit, Snap Dog in it. Okay. Um, hey, what's one more flip about? Um, living that dope. Yeah. Dope boy man. I'm saying because I, yeah, yeah. I was getting to the bag. I was going to be getting to the money. I was like, watch when yeah, I get home. Everybody mad. You're <laughs> it's a it's a twist on it. You know, everybody think it might be about just flipping drugs and getting to the money, but it got a moral to the story. You know what I'm saying? And now, for the people who ain't seen the movie, it's really like a must watch because it got a point and it's it's gonna hit home when people see the end of the movie. It hit home. Because it's real, and everybody has experienced it, and everybody knows somebody who then probably went through this. The flip ain't what you think when you watch this movie. Like it's, it's touching it hit home because it's real. That's the best part about the movie, then. Yeah, but so, uh, the other movie, Cheddar Boys. Yeah. What is that? It's about some guys that's um, hustling. I try to make movies. But is, some, is that is this your story? Nigga, go on and tell the truth. Real man, tell. It's it your damn story. It ain't it's my talking story. about your damn life. We, you it trying to you, you didn't want to call it because you you didn't want everybody to know how rough it gets, but it's cool. You can go on and tell no, me no, on Boss see, Talk 101. <laughs> no, when I do my story, I'm gonna do a series because it's, it's it's gonna be a little more than an hour and a half to tell the whole story where I can tell it right. But I'm gonna do a series called The Lords. Okay. On me and my homeboy. So I look to get that out probably in the next 18 months or so. Man, it's cold in Detroit, nigga. I don't want to be up there. I ain't it's, not going to miss y'all. It's be so cold in Detroit, <laughs> for real. It's, it was just snowing the other day, man, right I, before I came down I here. I flew up there and day. drove. Me and my wife drove to Chicago. My daughter was in uh, Saginaw, man. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I went up there to see what the hell was going on. I, my daughter's 28 now, though. Okay. This is when she first left and went up there. Oh. My, yeah, but I, I like it up there, man. Y'all got it going on. I did a photo shoot up there, too. Okay. But you guys, man, like I said, it's a day. It's brothers everywhere, man. We all, and you know what? It's some good brothers everywhere. If we can just it pull them together. Brothers. Yeah, yeah, and just great brothers. I like the way you said that. You know, we can pull them together and try to figure out ways to be more together and unified. Then yeah. we can be stronger, man, you know, and it's okay. You know, uh, we, we hit some bumps and bruises, right? And, and and we all got some scars on us, but at the end of the day, they scars. Now we healed. We got to go out here and try to create a narrative that's better for our youth. The next person, the next one's coming up behind us. And I think each generation should get better. Like I agree. Your kids shouldn't have to go through what you went through. Their kids shouldn't have to go what they went through, and so on and so forth. So each generation get better. You know, we got to just raise our kids up right and teach them what to look for, so they don't get with no damn fools. Because to me, it'd be like genetics, you know what I'm saying? If you get with somebody and have a kid with somebody who got bad genetics, it's 50-50 that you're, you might have this fucked but, up kid. But you're still lucky, though, because most <laughs> most of them ain't even getting with a, they can't have kids if they get the wrong, with, you know, it's, it's wild out here, brother. Uh, you know what I'm saying? We don't like to tell, you know, Boosie said some things that got him in a situation. The baby said some things that got them in a situation. Yeah, hey, well, no, it's not us in a way. Hold it's, on. It's not us. Do you, do you have children? Yeah, I got children. I, I got a daughter Graduated Michigan State, a daughter a senior at Michigan State, a daughter at Stanford. I got an eight and a nine year old, so yeah, I got kids. Did you did you see the Boosie episode when he was on Breakfast Club? Uh, not sure. Okay. I, see, I watch a lot of Boosie. Yeah, he entertaining guy yeah. like Boosie. Yeah, he um he was said he wouldn't give his daughter away to a woman, you know, in a marriage. Would you give your daughter away to a woman? No, but at the end of the day, I think. <laughs> No, I'm just saying it like this. Like, you know, I think in society, the new gay thing that's going on in society that's being pushed. The narrative, huh? Yeah, I think it's change that the world is going through, all around the world. I'm reluctant to that change myself. Like, 
it's something I got to get adjusted to and used to because it's not my norm. But but why do I get adjusted to it though? Man, just I'm gonna use this example. A hundred years ago, there was some white people that was mad that black people were starting to be on TV. That was their change. So this is the new change that we got to go through and get adjusted to because that's what's going on in the world. Like, we might don't want to see it, but it's happening. It's going on around us. And let them have whatever they want. You know what I'm saying? If that's what they choose to do, who am I to knock it? I, I, I kind of agree, really agree with you. I agree with you because... I, I don't mind you having what you want to have as long as you respect me for what I want to have. That's it. And that's the biggest problem is that they don't respect you for what you want to have and they want to push the narrative on you instead of respecting you for the, what you believe in. And I think that's wrong too. It's it's two sides of a coin where you think, okay, y'all disrespecting me because of the thing that I do and I feel like it's different, which is not. It's the same thing, that, you know, to me, anybody to change something from unnatural, you know, from from natural to unnatural and just do it a different way, that's on them. I ain't tripping. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm going with the process that, you know, the productive process that's been laid before me, for me. Yeah. Now, but at the end of the day, what were you about to say? Because I want to hear what you want to say. They're pushing this shit on us. I don't care. Nobody said that. Like, they, they, that's your personal opinion. That's, that's, no, that's, 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 that, right that's your there. personal opinion. Like, your, your, your bedroom is your personal opinion. We can't sit here and show our bedroom on camera. All you want to say so that's that's our bedroom opinion. Keep y'all bedroom opinion to y'all bedroom cells. Like we don't supposed to know y'all gay. If y'all gay, y'all gay. That's y'all. It's cool. Y'all gay, but keep to y'all cells. We don't supposed to know that. Like it's like y'all pushing on us to where y'all trying to make everybody gay. That's what they doing. They trying to make everybody gay. I don't care what they saying, how they feel. They trying to make everybody gay. Cause they want to put it on TV. I seen a picture in Dallas where it was a man, it was a statue, a man on the picture with another man holding him. This in Dallas. I see this just right down the street. Why do we all see this? Man, they trying I, to make us gay. I don't care what y'all say. How I look at it is like change. You know what I'm saying? Just you gotta think. A hundred fifty, a hundred years ago, white people thought it was cool to do X, Y, Z to black people. They didn't want to see black people on TV. They didn't want to see black people on the air. That's cool, but we're human though, so they have to see that. Like gay, that that that, that that's a situation that you put yourself in. But you gotta say, gay people are human. You are, they are human. So, but that that's that right in the bedroom. We can't sit here and put our bedroom special on TV. We can't do that. But so no, so why, why should they though? Man, we can't you do have it. romantic movies where they, where they get down all the time. And you, have to, like pay, and you, and you have to pay for those movies too. I like the romantic you to, movies. You have to pay for those Skinner movies. Max, you know what I'm saying? You have to pay for those movies. We ain't got to pay to see gay people on TV. We ain't got to pay for that. But they got regular romantic movies on TV all day long. Like, if, yeah. you, if you watched, the, when I grew up, the stories was a big thing. You, know, but you used to they, watch they, Young they the Rest Days of Our Lives. I ain't watch none of them. Yeah, my, you, my, was, you watching that Days of Our Lives, man. My mama watched the Young and the Rest. You know Miss Chandler, didn't you? You know Miss Chandler? I don't remember none of the characters, but you know how it goes. Victor Newman, nigga, you know, you know. I used to be like, damn, what Victor gonna do? I would get out of school. I was young. Yeah. I know what they used to watch. And Dallas, they used to watch Dallas. Yeah, Jr. Who shot Jr. Yeah, I got yeah, you. So all of that stuff was on TV, and they, it's like everything be on TV. So you're right. People want to see themselves like they see everybody else. You see heterosexual couples on TV. Having outings, but a gay person may want to see a gay person having an outing on TV that they can relate to. Tell them go pay for it. <laughs> My code is off the chain. I can tell you that. Tell right them now. go pay for it. Like we had, we had to go pay for it back in the day. We had to go pay for sacred shit. We had to go see on TV. I don't want to hear that shit. Tell them go pay for it, man. <laughs> so hey, so so let me let's let's move on. Uh, um, when when you uh. Think about the gatekeeper. It was one time old Trick Trick was trying to get it. You got to you you got to check in when you come into town. Okay, y'all still using Trick Trick as y'all a gatekeeper to let people come in and out the city? Hey, I'm yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> nigga, yeah, yeah. Trick hey, Trick listen, was a nigga man. that said he was running that whole setup there. You man. talking about street lords, <laughs> but Trick Trick was on Breakfast Club. I seen him and he said you know, you got to check right, in. Man. Niggas ain't finna just come up in here. You know what I'm saying? And Trick Trick don't know about it. Yeah, you got to check it in. So let me know about that. Um, What do you mean? Did the street lawyers have to check in with Trick Trick? The answer would be no. Why but, not? Uh, why would we? That's y'all city, though. I mean, that, I was just saying, like, Trick Trick, cool guy, but we ain't had to check in with no Trick Trick. Like, that's not something that ever happened. But, you know... Trick, trick, cool guy. I fuck with trick, trick. I ain't got nothing negative to say about him, but that ain't something we had to do. <laughs> like, what was the check in about? Do you know? 
I really never thought that was cool, personally. I never got into that. That's not my thing. Like, to say Rick Ross can't come in and perform for whatever reason it was, I thought that was disrespectful to Rick Ross. I ain't agree with it, but I don't know the motive behind it. I don't know what it solved. That's something that could have been prevented and talked about and worked out as men. I don't think the way they did it was the way to handle it. I'm a businessman at the end of the day. That wasn't good business. Because at the end of the day, y'all got to, somebody, Detroit artists got to still go back down to Miami. So y'all ain't, that didn't create a business situation to me. And I'm about having business and getting money. That wasn't a situation where we could have got money to me. I feel you. <laughs> good answer. Um, Another thing, you know, I heard about you, Ron, you know, I missed a 30, 35,000 selling clothes in three days. I heard that you sold, uh, I want to say $40 million, you and your crew, $40 million worth of weed, uh, chronic, uh, 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 was it skunk back then, or uh, uh, was it, uh, what they call it now, what y'all call it, nigga, you smoke. What y'all call it? No comment. I got no, no, hell no. Get a comment Kush, up, nigga. What you want? Kush. Which one, what, what you want? <laughs> well, you know, at any rate, you, you, nigga, you, you, you was the guy that pretty much uh, 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 was one of the guys at, that they say uh, sold this much drugs in 10 months. I, I, now, yeah. now, I don't know who had the calculator. I don't know where y'all hear y'all's at. Yeah. Uh, but I want to get into the details of this. See, because that's what you've been doing. You've been beating around the bush on these other platforms. But I want to understand how they came to the assumption, whether it did or it didn't happen, how did they calculate the amount of drugs that they felt like you and your you and your team, uh, the street large, yeah, he was, was pushing? Um, how did they do that? They stopped the um, 18 wheeler with 4,700 pounds of marijuana in it. 4,700 pounds. And um, the truck driver told him he made X amount of trips. You already been. You already went through your case, yeah, so you can talk about this. <laughs> yeah, so okay, so the, the truck driver has forty-seven pounds. Forty-seven pounds, guys. Forty-seven hundred. Oh, forty-seven hundred. Okay. Yeah, forty-seven hundred pounds. Yeah. And um, so, man, I hate they got you like that, man. Damn, they stopped it from going where it was going. I yeah, I don't want you to think I'm Vlad, nigga, but we can oh, talk about hey, this. Yeah, not- <laughs> I, I did my time, man. Right, so, <laughs> so when this happened, how did you feel about it? Like, you like, damn. Uh, when the truck, the truck was late, like two days, and uh, my cousin, he was uh, pressing to go get. Well, like, you come my, from the valley? I come from Arizona. Okay. So my cousin, like, he pressing to go get the truck, and I'm like, man, that shit caught, man. Fuck that shit. Uh, he sent 13 guys to go to the truck stop and pick up the weed. FBI come in from everywhere. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Shoot everybody. Two days they was plotting is what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they um, started arresting people and then they indicted people and then we went to jail. Wow. So uh, how much would a, would a 4,700 pounds run you back then? Uh, a couple million dollars. I'm getting pounds about. Four hundred dollars, three four, three fifty. So, so forty seven hundred pounds would be about a couple million dollars. Yeah. And so, man, that's a lot of niggas in the street trying to hustle, breaking it down. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I saying, mean, back then, you know, pounds might have been eleven, twelve hundred. We probably correct. Been, so so y'all drop, y'all just doubling them up. Y'all wouldn't be greedy. Like little tripping on our money then. Yeah. Man. I mean, but was y'all anal about it? Or was y'all letting niggas, if nigga couldn't make it, y'all, you know? Man, it was so much money flowing, so it was like everybody was eating. Like, I ain't, um, when we got indicted, it was like billboards in Detroit. Like, man, if y'all think it's a drought, wait till November, you know what I'm saying? Because we was the only ones we was bringing a whole bunch of weed into the city. So, so 4,700, I'm still, hold on, hold on. I'm stuck the on the number. The FBI put the billboards up. Yeah. <laughs> 4,700, so... Let's talk about this 4,700 right quick. So they calculate that out to be 10 million uh, within, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, uh, how many millions a month? Uh, they had to have a, a two to. So what they charged us with, they just said we moved 40,000 pounds in X amount of time. But if you do the math at a G a pound, that's $40 million. Yeah, so <laughs> at the end of the day, that's how they come up with that calculation. 
they probably said it was worth more. I'm they want you to. They, they trying to throw you away, <laughs> nigga. Yeah, yeah they, nigga. They, they, they gonna break it down to every nickel back. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. So, but you know, we we sell them pounds. We ain't selling. What you pounds. think they did? You think they burned it? You know, no, they put it on You know, that way they put that shit back on the street. Come on now. Let's go there. That man. shit going back on the street <laughs> for another drug bus. Say, hey, man, that's good um, stuff right there, man. So, um, but you, you, you know, I, Back in the days when nigga hustle, you know, when you run out of drugs, man, I ain't gonna lie to you, you worse than a dope fiend, even though you didn't smoke. Listen, you did not want to be out of product. Hell no. Like, that was the most <laughs> discouraging thing. When yeah. when everybody be like, no, nah, man, ain't nobody got nothing. Ain't nobody, you like, damn, ain't nobody got nothing? Man, how I look at that shit, man, I always was one of the person going to make that shit happen. Like, you know, today you hear everybody, I'm a boss, I'm a boss, I'm a... Man, you ain't no boss if you waiting on your man to go get yeah. the bag. You ain't no boss. You really me and a you worker. Both. <laughs> me and you both. I ain't waiting on that nigga. I remember one time, and I don't never tell this story. Let me let me get out of it. I'm gonna let you be. I'm gonna let you do your thing today. But but I can say that you know when you look at <clears throat> what what you went through, the time you spent, and then you get to fast forward it to the day, and now they've legalized the equation. Uh, uh, man, you know how many people do you feel? Uh, how do you feel about that? First of all, I'll stop right there. Man, it's, it's kind of like an insult. It's like a slap in the face. They they ruined some of our lives. You know what I'm saying? We did time in federal prison, and then they turn around and let Cookie sell drugs legally, yeah. sell marijuana legally. Yeah. Same thing that I sold. Yeah. But you know, and I got a felony for marijuana. Only felony I got. You know what I'm saying? But I can't get it removed. Exploded. You can't get it expired. I got to get pardoned from the president. So. You know, I feel a little certain way about that. Like, but maybe five, ten more years, it'd be That's legally, fe federally, and they'd be trying to clear my record and give me some reparations. And I don't know, but I ain't got, I ain't waiting on it either. You know, I got to. I feel like once they legalize it in every state, they should every felon they gave for weed, they should, they should expunge it. They should. They they should, but man, waiting on the government to do something for us, man, would be. I know we ain't crazy. never getting there. I would take from them now. I look at it like this, man. I've been around for. 10 president elections. I ain't seen now one of them motherfuckers change my family in any way, shape, form, or fashion. I got to get some money regardless who in office, whether it's a Republican or a Democrat. None of that shit matter. I, still, I feel you on that. I, I feel still got to feed my family and get some money. 100. 100. So, <clears throat> um, what, are you still in the music or you don't even really rock I, music? I still do music. I got records coming out. I just did a of the video out with me, Sada Baby, and Payroll. We got a record called Don't Trust These Hoes. Uh, I'm waiting on the clearance for um, from Empire to clear this record, and I was going to release the soundtrack for the movie. So, yeah, I still do music. Yeah, and and uh, some of your same old crew members, y'all putting the crew back together? Yeah, nigga, y'all putting the crew back together. Man. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Putting the crew back together let, far let as what? <laughs> how, how, many, how many people in that crew you still fuck with? One, two, I, like some of the dudes was my cousins, so I fuck with my cousins. I fuck with my, I fuck with one. I fuck with a few of them, but all of us not friends. Some of them didn't die. How many of them snitched? Out of the out of the rap group. No, no, or, some, no the one or, that you, you fuck with, the ones you fuck with. How many of them snitched? No, 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 of them snitched. They damn near. Some of them ain't never been in jail, so they ain't, they never got indicted where they would have to tell. Okay. You know? So they stand up guys. They didn't call other cases and ain't tell, but it's guys I don't fuck with. But I'm at the age now where if a motherfucker told man, that's them, man. I'm grown. I ain't, I ain't fucking with you, but I ain't mad that you. I ain't looking to kill you either at this day and age. I'm 43. Like, shit, that's them. They got to live with that. Mm -hmm. To me, at the end of the day, they just a selfish motherfucker. But I ain't finna go risk my freedom and be taken away from my kids on that Nipsey Hustle shit. You know what I'm saying? It, the worst thing you, you could do is call a snitch a snitch. They gonna be mad as hell, ready to kill you. So at this age, it's like uh, that's him. Like that selfish motherfucker did that shit. He got to live with himself. That's that's so true. <laughs> <clears throat> so when you look at the music and where it's at today versus when you was doing it. 
Because when you first was doing it, you know, it was CDs and y'all was out there, you know, flipping them. Yeah, you were yeah. flipping them. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, so. yeah. But then after a while, you know, this thing to digitize. And most people in the music industry today, they lying a lot of times. They ain't getting no money behind the music. It's hard to get music money right now, you know. you, you A million, I believe it was a million streams equated to $4,000, yes. which ain't a lot for us. Me and you, we know Hell already. No. We talking millions. We talking truckloads of uh pounds and all kind of stuff your mind don't think four thousand dollars my bills is high as hell um yeah. so when you think about that whole uh layout how do you get around the fact of making music and trying to figure out a way to establish making money i don't <clears throat> use music just be like, oh, this is going to be my way to make money. I own physical therapy clinics, so I make money. How many physical therapy? You like clinics with the S, nigga. I heard it. <laughs> yeah. I own physical therapy clinics. Yeah, I got three physical therapy clinics. I do real estate. I buy and sell houses. I'm still, I'm hustling, but I ain't hustling. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. Same product. as me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to change your hustle up. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, legalize hustle. Yeah, but, man, I ain't finna go do no bullshit, like, I got too much to lose at this. Correct. Yeah. But the thing I like about what you said is you you understand that that yo that forty uh, million dollar stretch that they talking about. We can take take that and change that to something else and still move on, right? Yeah, for Legalize sure. Legalize it. And man, when I was in jail, I ain't gonna even lie to you, man. I was sitting in there, I'm laying on my bunk, and uh, I'm thinking like, damn, man. You could have made millions of dollars doing something else. Like, this shit for suckers, man. This is this ain't what's happening. This like, ain't what's happening. Don't the you bunk, think you like, damn. I'm still man. like, man, I'm smarter than this. Now, granted, it might be some niggas who, in there who can't do shit else. But I'm like, no, nah, I'm smarter than this. This bullshit. It make you think, don't it? Yeah, for sure. How much time you did? I did four years. I did four, four years. years in the motherfucker. That ain't bad. Not that much money. No, man, any people, time is bad. People ever. say that shit, man. One day is bad. As soon as they give you them drawers that don't belong to you, you've been in that motherfucker too long, man. That's some bullshit. Like we intelligent motherfuckers, we can figure out You're how right. to get some cheese. Like that shit ain't worth it. And I tell you, it ain't worth it because the stress that it put on you and your family members. Like if you go to jail, if I made all the money I made, cause my little sister or my little brother to go crazy because I in jail and they can't cope with me being in jail. Yeah, I understand it. That shit ain't worth it. But the way I, the way I look at it, I, I look at it for us, I see myself doing all this stuff in the street, so I know it's gonna come back on me one day. So I know I'm gonna have to be in jail one day. That's how I look at it. I look at it like, I did this crime, so I gotta do this time. I know I did. So like whenever it come back on me, hey, it's my time to do it. I'm, I'm not out there trying to go to jail, but it, hey, if it come back on me, I did, I did. So I gotta do this time. So it's like, I'm not out there just, just like, hey, I'm finna go to jail for this, but no. But if it come, it come. I mean, that's how you do it when you look at it and you're a stand-up guy. That's what it is. But what you don't think about probably till you in jail is the effect that it has yeah, on, on other pe people. Yeah, that's the only thing. Like, it affects other people way harder than you know. Like, oh, I know. I know. I remember when I was in jail, when, when my mama was in jail, I remember going to see her. That ride home affected me like a motherfucker. That ride home, leaving my mama... In prison, and that ride home was like, that's whatever the fuck she did wasn't worth the pain that I had to suffer. That ride home, yeah, you're right about that. Like, yeah, that shit was fucked up. I ain't want my kids didn't come see me when I was in jail because I, I had been through that. And I ain't want my kids to experience that yeah. shit. Like that that's shit, that's like, real. Like, Hustle gear. What am I sure that dog? I'm gonna make sure you get. Where am I sure that dog? I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna send you the jogger suits where, down where, where here. Where my jogger? Where my jogger? I'm gonna send them down. You let me know the size they on their way. I, I'm, I'm out of Dallas <laughs> tomorrow. Your shit will be in the mail by Friday. You probably. I'm gonna get bus. your number and everything before we shut I this down. A uh, hustle gear. Just tell me how. What inspired that? And and how'd you come up with the design? And I actually that? drew the logo myself. Like I, I, my homeboys, they were selling t-shirts and shit. I'm like, man, I want to do that shit. Drew the design up, and um, at the time, we getting a bunch of money, so all the homies wearing them 100% hustler, cheddar boy this, cheddar boy that, where it became like a fad. I wound up going to the magic show. I went to Hong Kong. I stayed over there 10 days. What year was that? Man, that was in like 2000, 2001, I went to Hong Kong, like before that. Really? Yeah, I stayed, I stayed over there 10 days, designed the whole line. 
Uh, I met the dude, Sal Parasuko, when Parasuko Jeans was popping, and we had the same agent. I uh, did four million in sales at Magic. It was going on. And then I got indicted. They wound up stealing like two, three million dollar worth of clothes as soon as I went to the feds. So. Wow. Man, um, definitely, man, all the stuff that you've been through, man. How important is it to have God in your life? Man, that's super important, man. I think um, the spirituality and God and believing in the higher power kept me sane, keep me sane, because I ain't gonna, when I came home, it wasn't all gravy, you know what I'm saying? I remember my daughter wanted a Game Boy when I was in the halfway house. And I had the money for the Game Boy, but I really couldn't afford that motherfucker, so I was struggling. Like, damn, should I go back to selling dope? Like, I'm ready to get a bag, but it's like, man, you better than that. You're going to figure it out. Just keep going, believing in yourself. So, you know, that kept me going, believing in myself and the higher power to know something was greater coming for me, so. Dang, that's dope. <clears throat> how, how important is family? That's real important, I think. Um, and my family is kind of, it be in disarray sometimes. There's a lot of competition. It's, you know, sometimes family don't want to see other family doing better than others. Sometimes it be jealousy. It's just a lot be going on in family. Family have as good and as bad. But I try to raise my kids and keep everybody together and, build up from within and try to make it better. But, you know, family a struggle. Like, it's everybody got some bad shit going on in their family that they try to suppress and act like ain't really going on. But everybody mm-hmm. experiencing some trauma in their family. Like, we all got some trauma going on that we dealing with. It's in so every true. aspect, we're deaf, somebody died, somebody getting had, somebody using drugs, somebody went to jail. It's trauma in every family. Like, so staying together and trying to Hold each other accountable is a is a big thing. So, <clears throat> who's hot? I, I mean, I remember when y'all had nothing going up there. Yeah, I remember. And uh, <laughs> yeah, Days Loaf was the only one y'all had. They had a damn female up oh, there. Yeah. She was running the whole damn city. Nigga so, had a little gun and everything man, on the I video. You remember that? I yeah, nigga, y'all to... had Days Loaf man, running man. the whole damn city. She was about this tall. Okay, yeah, okay. this tall with a gun jumping out the bed. You don't remember that, dude? You were locked I, up? No, I was home when Days came out with the trap. Me, I was home when that popped off. But right now, we got we got a lot of people popping right now. I actually now, like but. Days Loaf. I thought she was kind of all right. I thought she was kind of cute, to be I mean, honest with right, the little pistol. Right, now, <laughs> right now, we got Sada popping. Big Who is that? Sada Baby. He, okay. He popping. He had a whole lot of choppers on that ass. We got Babyface Ray. He popping. I got records with both of them coming out. Okay, that's dope. Vezo, we got GT, we got um, you know, we got Race to Find Now, we got Street Lord Wine, we got Street Lord Rook, we got man, that's a whole list. We got VZ, it's a whole list of Detroit rappers that's growing. Hey. Like, like that's the sound kind of right now that's really popping that Detroit Flint sound where you got Rio the Young OG, you got BF the Pac Man. It's a it's a plethora of them. I can't even be honest with you. I can't keep up with them. It's so many of them coming back to back to back. I can't keep up. Well, well, first of all, I for you did y'all fix that water over there in Flint? You just said Flint, man. What's I, up with I, the I, damn water? Is the water fixed yet? No, man. That's your job. You a leader, man. You running the city. We better. Get, I'm, I guess Trick Trick don't want to fix the water up there. Flint, you don't come out of Flint, Detroit and go fix the Flint damn water. And Detroit is a it nice don't little distance. It don't matter. It don't, listen, man, when you running it, when you run, how far? How far is it? About two hours. That ain't nothing. I run all the way down to Louisiana. My boy right here tell you, won't we? Everybody know. I just you know what I'm saying? That's right. So that two hours ain't nothing. I was in Atlanta <laughs> yesterday. I, I, that's twelve hours. I ain't tripping. It's twelve we, hours to Atlanta. For yeah, Atlanta. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm saying from Detroit. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind. I don't mind jumping. I will go. You know what I'm saying? No, I want to make it. It's, it's, how do you make the difference? It's more political on getting the water fixed. You know, it's not just something that the inner city of the com- people in the community got control over with the water board and the elected officials and so on and so forth. How did you feel when that happened? Man, black people get the short end of the stick all the time. Wow. Like, in the predominantly black communities, right. you're going to get the short end of the stick on everything, on education, water, Policing, you we getting the short end of the stick. What we got to do 
to figure that part out where we can stop getting the short end of the stick. To me personally, we need to build up from within, like build our own economy system, black buying black, black grocery stores, blacks coming together, taking care of black neighborhoods. I like that. So, That's where it used to be. Um, Big Sean. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't going to let you get off and talk about Big Sean. Uh, was Big second, Sean just threw the rent. That was the second best thing I even said. I'm going to tell you the first time later. I mean, okay. <laughs> That's my boy. He watching. Big All Sean, right. uh, do we ever come back to the to Detroit? Or have you seen that nigga? Yeah, I talked to Big Sean. Yeah, that nigga at? That a nigga on the pitch right there. I, I, I met the nigga up there in Vegas uh, yeah, uh, at the uh, Magic. I talked to Big Sean on FaceTime through my boy Juan. Juan and Big Sean are really close. You okay. They're cool. Like, uh, when Big Sean was getting started, uh, Street Lord Juan was letting him record in the studio. So they really close. Juan put him on the phone. I talked to him on FaceTime. He he's in the city. Like he worked with all the Detroit artists. He got records with him. He That's dope. He um actually he performing on Thanksgiving at the halftime of the, of the Lions game. So yeah, he rep Detroit to the fullest. I'm, That's dope. He don't litter, but he spend time there. He's supporting the movement. He's supporting people what's going on. So shout out to Big Sean. Shout out to T Grizzly. Shout out to everybody in Detroit who doing their thing. It's more supportive today than it was 20 years ago. Like, how, how did you link up with Birdman when you, you say you did stuff with Baby? He came in town and uh, we paid him to do a record. Like, you How know. was that? You, you know, y'all had it guap, so y'all, he I come mean, in uh, and he like, I'm, <laughs> he, he came in, he did, his, he, did his, he did his thing. He did know? his verse? He did his verse. No, he was cool. Like We was we did like some tour stuff with Cash Money at one time. Like, did we, you? We did different shows with him, so it was it was love. Like, um, did he pay you? No, he didn't pay us. Like we was um, y'all had your own marketing strategy and all yeah, that. Yep. Like I, be, I, I remember the, the worst show that we probably ever did. We did a show in Atlanta with um, Cash Money. Right, this right when they was popping. It's right when Bling Bling came out, and uh, we was at the Atrium. Man, man that was that was in that was in nineteen ninety eight or something, bro. Yeah, we had damn the, it, boy. We had the Atrium and. Uh, we performing at the atrium, and uh, so the crowd going crazy because they want cash money. This one bling bling came out, and uh, so the the host telling them they finna uh, put cash money on, but they forgot that we were supposed to go on next. <laughs> so, what them niggas do when y'all ran out there, man? Boo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that crowd was acting as a goddamn fool that was booing us like a motherfucker. So, so <laughs> I actually a big Birdman fan. I uh, love what he done over there. All the people who be crying about the money, millionaires, it's crazy to me. Everybody getting money over there. These guys done came from nothing to something, man. They should be very proud of that whole operation that they hey, done. Man, big Birdman did big things in music, bigger than people give him credit for. Like he could have had the biggest acts in music for a long time from. Lil Wayne, the Drake, the Nicki, the Juvenile. He been rocking for a long time and been consistent to slip. Young Thug, he been he been doing his thing. Like, yeah, I know he, he gave over one billion dollars away. Who? Did, who? Birdman. Oh yeah, for if, sure. I be actually put Nicki, Drake, and uh, Wayne money together. That's over a billion dollars. So y'all yeah. can't say he's not making money. Like, yeah, Birdman, he been doing his thing, man. But hats off to that guy. Like wow. anybody who don't give him his flowers, they just been hey, like, hey, nigga. Yeah. Hey. Hey. He even, he even spent time with uh, YB. Yeah, he done did. You know that. Mm -hmm. yeah, he always give everybody. He, I was with the Reds, him and the Reds. He always give young dudes the right hand of fellowship in the South for sure. Yeah. And uh, I know that because you see it. And, um, you know, we, we got a couple of people down here. So who's who's really uh, making noise as far as up there? Like like when you come to the city, uh, you know, um, is it trick trick the check in thing? I, I know. No, no. Listen, uh, <laughs> who is who is the man up there? But boy, that'd be a no idea. He's like, come on, man. I just can't see another grown man checking into another man, grown man. man. I can't see it. Shit, I was like, man, trick trick, my guy. But man, I, I ain't nobody in my crew never did no checking in no trick trick. So so <laughs> so BML doing the movie up there. You had a few people but disgruntled about it, saying you know don't put their name in it and all that. Man, listen, Wait a minute, man. <laughs> uh, I'm just trying to figure out, man, what's going down? What's really going down up there, man? Man, that guy is not Blue Da Vinci. He's from California, but I mean, I don't. My this is my personal opinion. Nobody can say nothing bad about your name if you ain't doing nothing bad. You wouldn't have been saying no bullshit. Like, it ain't no knock on him or whatever he got going on, but 
You ain't have to say that shit. Nobody exactly. would have probably would have been thinking about Blue Da Vinci, man. It ain't, <laughs> well, ain't that crazy, man? Like, shit, if he never would have said that shit, he would have never been a big hoopla about it. Like, if he never would have said whatever he said. Yeah, ch- like chasing attention. That's all it was. Right. So, I mean, I don't know what he did, but if he if he did... No, too that's bad, all, that's all it was chasing attention cause ain't no, like you said ain't, ain't no person that been in the streets and be on the internet and go to just doing shit like that like for clout like you been in the streets for as long you know if your name ain't hold, if your name hold weight you know it's gonna hold it weight by itself you ain't gotta say nothing at all to nobody yeah I mean that's what I stand on like shit if you ain't did nothing then you ain't got nothing to worry about you ain't got nothing to worry about like I know the guy Sosa Dexter Sosa you know I know a few I know a lot of those guys really I'm like well, hey man, we done had a heck of a run. Uh, uh, we done had a heck of a run, man. How can people get a hold of First, what's your top three artists of all time? Come on, dead or alive? You know, My you done see, you done seen the damn time, show. You know what man. we gonna ask? Top three artists of all time. Number one, it can be hip hop. It can be any genre. All time. All hip-hop, time. Any genre. Any, uh, yeah, you come gotta on. Gotta put Michael Jackson in there. Oh man, man. man. niggas say Michael Jackson you ain't even put, like, like all that. They say Chris Brown better than Michael Jackson, man. man that's because they don't know Michael Jackson. I don't know. I'm talking about the big nose, Michael Jackson. Three Honor, boy, you get a shout out every time, man. I'm talking about the big, t- the big nose, Michael. Okay, Jackson. well at least you know which one. The <laughs> yeah. kid would have whooped some people up too. Yeah. yeah so uh, who is know, number two? Tupac gotta be in there somewhere. Tupac man. is the realest. Yeah. Number three. Man, one of my favorite artists. Yeah, all time. I rock with Scarface, man. I rock with Scarface. Ooh, that nigga ain't never did a bad verse, nigga. Check it out. That boy came in Texas hard on that one. I grew grew up on different music, man. The music that I grew up on that I rock with probably different than everybody else. Wow. So how can people get a hold of you if they want to try to get get up to be in a cameo in a film? You're doing a casting call. We want to get on how we do it. uh, DM me, Street Lord Rook on Instagram. It's um, Street Lord Rook on Facebook. Uh, On Twitter, it's... The real street lord one. Just DM me. I respond. I ain't no funny stuff, nigga. Oh, really? I never answer everybody who. What's as, love? As long as they ain't DMing me no crazy shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But for the most part, I answer anybody then. If they off the deep end with some weirdo shit, then I just kind of quit responding. But I ain't blocking nobody. And then, like, this shit, it ain't this serious, man. It's like, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. real life. Like, I'm. A real person. I ain't better than nobody else. You know what I'm saying? I, I put my shoes same. on like everybody else. I feel the same way, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Uh, um, one thing I can't say, brother, I always tell everybody sitting in that seat, we love you, brother. I love Period. y'all too. Yeah, man. you know, if you, if you need us, man, man, we here in Texas. We, you got your newfound family in here. That's your that's your sister, that's your cousin, and I'm your brother. Uh, yeah, we family, man. and we want our damn outfit too. Uh, so, I yeah, yeah, you. yeah. Give me the side. Side. All three of us, we co hosting this thing. We're going to do a round the table for all our people and uh, medium right there. I guess I can do a large because I'm trying to lose weight, but you know. Um, and what you want, babe? Small, okay. Yes, you are tight, right? You can't, you can't forget you that. You know, but at the end of the day, bro, thank you for coming on our show. Um, and like I said, bro, if you, the way you pushing, man, I know already entrepreneurship is written all over you. You know, I know you're an entrepreneur, and, and I just say, man, help some young brothers that's trying to come up, pass it to somebody, give 5% to charity, man, and everything going to be all right. All right, man. Check it, man. Hey, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. <laughs>